are you going? Who are you talking to? Who are you texting? What's going on here? All my insecurity falls back to I'm punishing her for what somebody else did. She's not the issue. I have to realize who I'm fighting. I have to keep God number one. Yeah. I have to keep God as the focus. So whatever we're going through, if she says something, I can't focus on what she says. If she says something mean to me, I can be like, hey, I didn't like that. But I can't make that bigger than our relationship. I can't make that the biggest thing between the two of us. So recognize your opponent. Recognize who it is you're fighting. And when you go out and they're going to throw a left jab and you get hit, you don't drop in the fetal position. I just took a shot. Oh, my gosh. It's over. It's over. No. It's a fight. You're going to get hit. You're going to get knocked down. You're going to get scuffed up. You're going to get bruised up. You're going to get beat up. But you keep your hands up and you keep your chin tucked and you fight through and you go on. But you have to know who you're fighting. I'm not fighting her. I'm fighting what's trying to drive a wedge between us. I'm fighting what's trying to drive a wedge between us. I'm fighting in this position that I'm in, it's a different position. I'm in a fishbowl. All you guys are looking at me. That's why we have so many people fail and so many people drop the ball because everybody's watching them. If you're waiting for me to make a mistake, I'm going to make one. You don't have to wait a long time. I'm going to drop the ball. But if you're seeking God, if you're looking for answers from God, you're going to find those too. But you have to realize where there's a God, there's a devil. Anything that I have good that God's doing in my life, the devil's trying to mimic with something bad. Trying to convince me I'm not worth it. Trying to convince me you're not worth it. Trying to convince us we're not worth it. Why do we even do this? You have to know who you're fighting. It's a fight. It is a fight. You have to, you have to go into it. There is nothing they can do to stop me. There's no nothing. Can there is nothing they can do to hurt me. They can't. And as soon as we allow ourselves not to be hurt, it is incredible what you can accomplish. Because I spent a lot of years addicted to drugs and alcohol. I spent a lot of years addicted to that lifestyle. So many times it wasn't the actual quitting the drugs and the alcohol, it was quitting the lifestyle. I like the lifestyle. It was exciting. When he was talking about those windy roads and loop de doos and oh man, I had stories from, from every day, every weekend. It was just this lifestyle of, I honestly had the mindset, so if I die tomorrow, so what? I've lived a full life. I've done a lot of wild and crazy things. So what if I die tomorrow? And what a lie. What a lie that was. Because if I would have died tomorrow, I never would have experienced being a dad. I never would have experienced the love of God in my life. I never would have experienced what life is really about. And so with all this, I have to realize who I'm fighting. I can't go through my life. If I get in an argument with someone, that's not the big picture. The big picture is, is who hates me, who wants to destroy me. So many of us focus on this right here. This is all we see. Whatever it is right in front of us, whatever we can touch, whatever we can feel, that's, that's all we can grasp. Mentally, that's all we can pick up. When in reality, you have to see, no, you know what? This is, the devil hates me. He hates what I stand for. He hates what I do. He hates my family. You know, And you even go back to the story of the prodigal son. There was a father that absolutely loved his son. Loved him with his whole heart, not half of his heart. His son wanted to go out and do his thing. And I'm just going to summarize this. This is kind of out of, it, it'll be... It'll be there, but it'll have a little, little bit of Jephalonians on it, too. So you'll have to look up the Jephalonians later, okay? But his son wanted his inheritance, and he goes out. And so if you've heard the story, he, he goes out, he gets his money, he gets his thing, he, and he hits the road. Now, in that story, it doesn't say the dad followed his son from town to town, begging him to come home. It doesn't say he followed him from party to party. Saying, come back home. I love you so much. What do you need? And see, in our society today, when we have a loved one that's, that's messed up or strung out, I've seen moms going into the drug houses. I've seen moms going into neighborhoods they should never be in. I've seen moms chasing and begging and pleading for you to come home. Just come home. This dad never went out and chased his son. Never begged and pleaded. He prayed for him. 
And when he saw him coming down the road, when his son hit his rock bottom, he was right there with arms wide open. And sometimes in our life, that's where we need to be, is right there with our arms wide open. I'm not going to chase you, but I'm here for you. Amen. I'm not going to run after you, but I'm here for you. Amen. And so that's, that's where we, we miss it sometimes. We spend all of our time, our addiction becomes chasing them. Our addiction is as much the lifestyle as it is the drugs and alcohol. Our addiction is everything that's going on. Or we love them so much, you hear the expression of we love them to death. And that happens. Because they never can hit rock bottom. When they're right there. When, when mom is running Junior to the drug house to get drugs because she's afraid for their safety and everything that's going to go on. Where is his rock bottom? Where is his rock bottom at? He doesn't have one. He doesn't have a rock bottom to come from because you're always, you're always cushioning in the fall. You're always, you have to realize the big picture. I've, I'm going to have to let him fall down. When you're a baby and you're a toddler and you're doing your thing and, and you're crawling and all of a sudden you start taking steps, you're going to fall. You're going to fall. You can't go put a, put a bicycle helmet and shoulder pads on your kid and protect them every second of every day. They're going to bite it. They're going to hit the table. They're going to hit the sidewalk. But you know what? That's how they learn to get up. That's how they learn. If I'm sitting there watching every step and following them and trying to catch them and trying to, they're never going to be able to walk on their own. They're never going to be able to run on their own because I'm trying to protect every little thing they do. I can't do that. God didn't design us like that. So we have to stop that. You're going to have to take your bumps and your bruises. I have a daughter in Denver and a son in Vegas and I love them and I pray for them daily. And you know what? They're living their life. My job was to bring them to a place and present God and the world and living and life to them. Now their decisions are theirs, but it's been put on their plate. They live their life. I don't have a say in how they live their life. I just hope that I poured good things into them until they went and started their life. And so, so many times when you see a boxer in the ring, you don't see his mom standing there next to him with gloves on, all laced up, ready to go. He's on his own. He's got to fight that fight by himself. But mom, I've seen, I've seen videos of mom getting in the ring and hitting the opponent with her heel, taking her shoe off and hitting the opponent in the head and helping her son out. I've seen that. You know, and that's crazy. That was a cool video to watch, though. But the reality is you're not going to get the win. You didn't fight the fight by yourself. You didn't fight it on your own. You have to know who your opponent is. You have to know who you're fighting. And you have to be prepared. When we go in the gym and we start doing rounds of a left jab, and we're working our jab, we work, and then we start the two, and we're working, and we're working our fundamentals and our basics. That's our basics for boxing. When you come in here and you start working your fundamentals, it's prayer. It's getting on your knees and praying. It's being in your word. It's studying. You become familiar with this lifestyle. You become familiar with Jesus in your life. You become familiar with what he expects from you. As, as boxers and fighters for me, they know what I expect as a coach. You have to know what God expects from you. You have to know what your boundaries are. You have to, we don't just do what we want to do and say we're doing it in the name of Jesus. We don't just go do what we want to do. There's actually a story of some guys that were going to go cast out some demons of, that they knew about. And, and the demon-possessed man told him, yeah, them I know, and Jesus I know, but you, I don't know. And he put a whooping on them because they didn't have the authority. They didn't have, what, they didn't have that training. They didn't have what it took. They had a form of it, and, and they took a beating because of it. Okay, so you have to be equipped. You have to be ready. You have to have the mindset. Anything. If I'm teaching a six-year-old kid to tell themselves nothing, can stop me. Nothing is going to stop me. They can't hurt me. Then I need to tell you as Christians to make up your mind. Nothing is going to stop me. I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what the bank says. I don't care what, what the boss says. I don't care. Nothing is going to stop me. You can't stop me. You can't. But yet, we're in a situation and our loved one decides to leave and, and get a sports car and they're having a midlife crisis and so they're getting a, you know, a younger girlfriend or a younger boyfriend in a sports car and they're gone and we want to go jump off of a bridge. We want to end it. Well, you're giving them the power over your life. 
You just gave them the power if you want to live or die. You just gave them the power if you want to be successful or not. You just gave them every ounce of power that you had in your life. You handed over to somebody else because they didn't want to be with you. Give me a break. We have to fight through that. We have to think, you know what? They can't stop me. They can't stop me. They can run off with whoever they want. They can drive off in whatever they want. They can't stop me. Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen. Greater is the power in me than he that's trying to stop me. So I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight like that third monkey. I'm going to fight. There is no way you're stopping me. I'm going to scratch, claw, whatever I got to do. But, but I'm going to fight. That's the attitude we need to have. That's the attitude we need to have as followers of Christ. Because we walk out of here during the week, and, and it gets a long week sometimes. It is a long week. You go out, and it's like, oh, my gosh, I've been beat up since Sunday afternoon all the way till the next Sunday morning. I took a beating every day. You know what? There's guys that come in the gym. They haven't been in in quite a while, and they take a beating when they get in and start training again. Their timing's off. They haven't been working their fundamentals. They haven't been working their basics. But just a short time, short time of doing the drills, going through the motions. And all of a sudden, their timing's on. They're looking smooth. They're moving fast. Everything's clicking. Everything's firing on all cylinders. Same concept. Be in your word. Have a prayer life. Spend time with Jesus. Spend time wanting to know what he wants in your life. And, and get mentally tough. Get mentally tough of, you can't stop me. You can't stop me, no matter what happens. I'm watching the flames bust through the roof of our old building, and I'm watching it burn to the ground. And I'm standing there, and it's on fire. The flames are jumping out, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, all right, God, where are we going now? Because you're, you know, you're in this, so I don't know what your plan is, but I love you. And I'll never forget standing in that parking lot saying, well, I don't know what you're doing, but I love you. Because never for a moment did I doubt that he had me. Never for a moment did I doubt that I was where I was supposed to be. Never. God is God. He loves me. My reaction in the middle of my storm is going to dictate my outcome for the rest of it. Come on. I can lay down and kick rocks and cry and whine and snivel and, and, and make a mess in the gravel and just, just do all kinds of stuff. Throw a good old-fashioned fit. It doesn't. What's that going to do? Besides, that, the place is still burning down and I'm throwing a fit. And it's just like, God, I trust you. I trust you. No matter what is going on, I trust you. They can't stop me. They can't stop me. And I always, I love going to Paul. I love bringing it up about Paul because here he was in prison. And then they're moving him. And then they've got him on a ship. Well, then the ship sinks. The ship goes down. Now he's a castaway. He's dog paddling to the shore. Then he gets on the shore. Then he's building a fire to keep warm just to survive. He's building a fire and he's throwing wood on the fire and he picks up a stick and it's a poisonous snake that bites him. If anybody had a chance to kick rocks and say, hey, why me? Why is this going on? He could have. But you know what? He knew who his father was. He mm. knew who his strength was. It didn't even slow him down. He just kept going because he knew Jesus had him. He knew. It doesn't matter what comes at me. And, and if there's ever a moment of, you can't stop me. You can't stop me. That right there. You, yeah, they weren't going to stop him. He's about his father's business. He's about his father's business. Doing what God wants him to do. So, today, recognize who it is you're fighting. Don't put the enemy face on a loved one. Don't make an enemy out of somebody you love. Mm -hmm. Don't say things to an enemy, to people you love. Amen. Mm -hmm. There's power in the tongue. When, you, when I badmouth you and yours, I'm badmouthing mine because mm -hmm. we're one. Come on. So if I'm badmouthing everybody that's close to you, I'm badmouthing us. If we're in a relationship and that's what I'm doing, then that's what I'm doing. Have wisdom. Don't speak like our parents used to say. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. <laughs> Some of us need to learn to bite our lip. Some of us need to learn to be quiet. Mm -hmm. I have an old saying from back in the day. Nothing like the, the taste of your own blood in your mouth will shut you up. 
That means you pop somebody in the mouth when they say something. Nothing like to taste your own blood to make you be quiet. When I was ornery, that's how I used to think. You got something you want to say, well, guess what? How does that feel? You know, I'll pop you right in the kisser. And so it's one of those to where it's, it's, that wasn't the right way, but it was a mindset of that was just brutally honest. That was just brutally real. You have to be careful what you say to some people because they aren't going to like it. They may not take it. Our society now is, oh, I'm going to vent. I'm going to say this and I'm going to do that. And, oh, they, they're going to hear from me. You know what? Sometimes, sometimes we just need to learn to bite our lip and be quiet. I, we used to joke around when, when we were logging and it was always a rough crew and now and then, you know, we were always setting chokers and it's really rough terrain and we would have young guys working with us and you're always pushing them and trying to make people tough, you know, and, and trying to help them take it to that next level. And life is, is, is a journey of that. People trying to help us get to the next level. Sometimes it doesn't seem like it. Sometimes people are trying to stop us. But I can remember we would, there was this one kid that would talk. From the time we got in the truck in the morning till the time we got out of the truck at night, all day long he would talk. All day. He would just, you know, whatever he was talking about, he just talked. And, and people could be listening, they could be answering or not. And finally, I'm just like, man, I have never met anybody that can talk all day and never say anything. You have not, you have not said one thing. You've talked all day long and you've never said anything. And we laughed about it and we joked about it and he got a kick out of it. But don't be somebody that talks all day and never says anything. Say what you mean and mean what you say. But don't just talk to talk. Because here's what happens. If I'm trying to share the love of Jesus with you and you're used to hearing me like Charlie Brown's teacher just talking, wah, 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 wah. When I'm trying to share the love of God, you're used to hearing a whole bunch of nonsense from me. So you're not listening to it mean what you say say something that has that has substance don't just talk to talk we don't always need to fill space we don't always just need oh it's quiet i need to say something no there's times that sometimes we need to think some but we really as a society we need to learn sometimes when to bite our lip when to be quiet we don't have anything nice to say it's best not to say anything you know it's because that Camille would pop me right in the mouth if I said something. No. <laughs> no, but, but know your adversary. Know your opponent. Have your fundamentals, your foundation. Don't get hung up on, on feeling anxiety. See what the big picture is. Realize what you're fighting. Don't get hung up on the doctor's diagnosis. Don't get hung up on the depression. Don't get hung up on, we get, we're, we're a society of titles. Everything is a title. We have to have, we have to put a name on it and, and have a title for it. No, you know what? I, I have a friend that, you know, through drug abuse was diagnosed as like bipolar or schizophrenic. Well, it was through using drugs. You know, they're testing him when he's high. And of course he's going to be like that. Well, he started hanging on to that title. Well, you know, they told me I'm this and they told me I'm that. And they tested me and it said this. Well, you know what? I could have, I could have done that test a million times and had the same results as you. Don't own that. Don't grab onto that because they're telling you that. You're going, you're going into something altered, high, and you're getting tested and you've been high. You've lived a lifestyle for years. Of course they're going to tell you you're off. You've been off. We've been living that way. And so I just told them, I said, look, man. I don't care about that. You're no more that than I am. You were when you were using, but you're not using anymore. Don't own that. Don't buy, don't let them put a label on you to tell you you're this. Don't let them put a label on you to tell you they're that, you're that. Because all that label is, is just another weight. Just another weight to set you down. Just another weight to hold you back. You need to tell yourself, they can't stop me. I don't care if this is the diagnosis I've got. They can't stop me. They're not stopping me. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. Anybody else got anything to go with that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fundamentals. Basics. Mindset is huge. Your mindset is just as important as a good jab. Your mindset is just as important as footwork. You have to know they can't hurt me. They can't stop me. There is nothing they can do. All right.